Okay, so how can we use this? All right, so what do we know? We know that the change in the kinetic energy is equal to the work. Woohoo! All right, now that we know that there, that there are two types of work, right? There's the one done by the conservative forces, and there's one done by the non-conservative forces. So this is the non-conservative, the work done by the non-conservative forces, plus the work done by the conservative forces. So all we've done is we've said, hey, there's some work being done. Let's just break it up into two camps. Those camps that those folks who don't depend on the path and those who do depend on the path, right? So these are path people, path peeps, and no path, right? So the, remember, the non-conservative forces depend on the path, and the conservative forces don't. All right, and then we do a quick trick, right? We just take this, and we bring it onto that side of the equation. Okay, now we have a very subtle thing. The change in the kinetic energy, that only depends on the initial state and the final state, right? But the work of the conservative forces only depend on the initial state and the final state. That's different than the work of the non-conservative forces, which depends on the path, which we have to think about how the thing's like going around in the path. But here, these, both of these don't, and they seem kind of similar. So what we do is we redefine this. We redefine this. The kinetic energy plus the potential energy is equal to the work of the non-conservative forces. So there's this new quantity called the potential energy, which is equal to minus the work of the conservative forces, or minus the conservative forces dotted into the path. And of course, if I can go this way, I, I can also go this way. right? So if I can write this as the antiderivative, I can write down the force, the conservative force, to be equal to minus du dx i hat. Okay, so there's actually a whole bunch of stuff here that I am just sweeping over and throwing into the ground. And this is going to be great if you decide to take a math methods course or a mechanics course or the next level physics courses, right? So this is actually much more complicated than I've done here. It's something called a gradient, right? So the direction that the force is changing in depends on the direction of the change in the potential. Okay, so it's a little tricky. Um, I usually tend to think about it, like is it changing in X or is it changing in Y? And uh, is it changing in both? Um, that tends to not be a problem that comes up in physics. One, if it does, I'm sorry, please don't get mad at me. Okay, so, Right, so if we can take if we can take an integral to get the force, right? If we take the integral of the force to get the potential, we can take the derivative of the potential to give us a force. Okay. Now this only depends on the endpoints, right? Point A to point B. So if I'm going from point A here to point B, that's my path. Right? If I'm going from point A to point B, right, here's the great thing. Everything on the left side of this equation only depends on the state at point A and the state at point B. Whereas everything on the right side of the equation depends on the path between A and B. Right? So these A and B tend to be the endpoints of our path. Right? So this new quantity we've described is the potential energy. Now this is a cool thing, right? It's a neat idea that when I have an, when I have 
a change in this internal state of my system, right? I have a change in its in potential energy. So if I lift up my marker, as I do that, my potential energy changes. There's the potential that this marker is going to have a lot of energy if I let it go, right? So we often use this idea in physics in lots of different places. There's an interesting subtlety here. So So u of x is equal to f dot dx. Now, there's an, an instinct to just go ahead and write down that equation, right? Whereas here, I wrote it, wrote it as delta u. Now, I love this notation. This is the one that I use almost exclusively. Delta u right, the u of b minus u of a, right, is equal to minus the integral from starting at point a to point b, f dot dx. But, 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 sometimes you see it written like this. It's not completely true, right? There's a plus c missing here, right? Anytime I just do an arbitrary integral, I end up with some constant that dangles off on the edge. Now here's the great thing about potential energy. The potential energy itself isn't a thing. What really is a thing is the change in the potential energy. The change in the potential is a thing, right? When I have a change in the potential energy, I get a force, right? So when the change happens over a distance, it leads to a force. But if no matter what my potential is, it could be C, some random value, if the potential isn't changing, it doesn't lead to a force. So one might say, is the potential even a thing, right? The real quantity there is the change in the potential. So you'll see I wrote it here, the change in the potential from point A to point B, and just make sure that if you do get a mathematical function for the potential energy, you get it in terms of u of x by doing this integral, right? You do an indefinite integral. You better make sure that you have that plus c there because you can always shift your potential by any constant you'd like.